Hey guys, we just have this very short topic left in the medallion genetics uh, lesson. So this is about medallion genetics versus non-medallion genetics. Now, so far for T's, you just need to remember the patterns for medallion genetics. And then you can plug in uh, numbers, right? And if it doesn't fit those patterns, then it's going to be non-medallion genetics. And before we go to those numbers, I just want to point out that there is a new question form in T7, and this is filling the blank. That said, I have seen this type of question for math, but I haven't seen it for um, biology and AMP yet, but we want to be prepared, right? All right, now for monohybrid, that means we're talking about just one trait. Could be the height of the plant, could be the color of the seed, right? We are just talking about one trait. Now, if it's a monohybrid, hybrid, then this follows this three to one phenotypic ratio, which means the three is going to be that dominant trait. And then the one is going to be the recessive trait. Okay, so let's say um, tall is the dominant trait and short is the recessive trait. Um, and then we're gonna use big T for tall and little t for short. And so modern hybrid, it starts from homozygous parents, big T, big T, little t, little t. And this will produce F1 generation, which is going to be a hybrid, right? Big T, little t. And then this F1 is going to cross big T, little t, cross with big T, little t. And this is going to generate a ratio of three to one. Three out of four offspring will be tall, right? With that dominant trait. And the one out of four will have this short trait. Um, if you convert that to percentage, that will be 75% versus 25%. Okay, now let's say this cross generates 100 seeds. Theoretically, how many seeds are going to become a tall plant and how many seeds are going to become a short plant? So you just need to plug in the numbers, right? So there are a total of 100 seeds and three out of four is going to be tall, right? So that's going to be 75 seeds. So that's tall and short total 100 seeds times the proportion, right? One out of four. So that's going to be 25 seeds. All right, now on T's, you may get a different number, right? So instead of 100, it could be 200, right? It could be 500, but you should have a calculator that you can use to calculate these numbers. Okay. now. Next one is a dye hybrid. So dye means two. So now we're talking about two traits at the same time. So it's just a little bit complicated. So let's say um, we're looking at um, tall versus a short, but also the color of the seeds, which is let's say um, green versus yellow. Tall and the green, they are the dominant trait and then short and yellow, they're the recessive trait. Again, you're going to have the very first generation, the parents, um, though, those are going to be homozygous. So big T, big T, big G, big G, cross with little t, little t, and little g, little g. Right? So this will give you big T, little t, big G, little g. Okay, so that's F1 generation. F1 generation is going to cross, and then you are going to get that 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio in the F2 generation. So that's 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. And then this 9 is going to represent the proportion of offspring that have both dominant traits. So it's going to be tall and green. 
And then the two threes will represent seeds that have just one dominant trait and then one recessive trait. So this one could be tall, but yellow seeds. And then this one is short, but with green seeds. Okay, so you can think about this, right? This is dominant and this is dominant. Okay. And then the last one, the smallest number, the smallest proportion is going to be offspring that have two recessive traits, short and yellow. So similarly, if I give you the total number of seeds you collected in um, F2 generation, then you can just plug in the numbers, right? So again, if you have 100 seeds, you plug in the numbers. So let's say how many seeds are going to generate a tall plant with the green seeds. So that's going to be 100 times. Uh, proportion is going to be 9 divided by the total, right? The total is 9 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1. So this is going to be 9 over 16, right? So you do your math, 100 times 9 divided by 16. And then when you have a calculator, you can calculate this number first, right? You can plug in 9 divided by 16 times 100, that works. Or you can just do 100 times 9 divided by 16 on the calculator, that works too. Okay? So just in case uh, some of you were wondering, like, how do I calculate the, the proportions on a calculator? That's how you can do it. All right, and then the rest of it, the 3, 3, 1, then you can just use the same method, right? Just 100 and then times whatever that proportion is. Okay, now let's look at the practice question. This question states a pea plant has a dominant phenotype for plant height. Which of the following letters best represent the genotype for this trait? Supply or select all that apply. So it says this plant has a dominant phenotype. Now, if T doesn't specify, you can just assume that a question is going to follow the medallion genetics. So it's a complete dominance. You have a dominant allele, and then you have a recessive allele. OK, now remember, for medallion genetics, dominant phenotype corresponds with the two genotypes, right? You could have AA, homozygous dominant, or big A, little a, right? That's a heterozygous dominant. Both of these genotypes will give you that dominant phenotype. So there are two correct answers, A and C. Okay, next question. Okay, so this is a fill in the blank questions. The first one, pea plants have seeds that can be yellow or green. Green is represented by big G, so that means this is the dominant allele. And yellow is represented by the little g. Two pea plants, one heterozygous green. So this gives you um, a very clear indication that this has to be big G, big G, right? Because this is homozygous. And one yellow. Now, recessive trait has to be two recessive alleles. If these two are crossed, what percentage of their offspring will have green seeds? So you can figure out that's going to generate 100% big G, little g. Right? You can put that in the Pontus square, but it, it will give you the same result. Percentage with green seeds, 100%. Okay, next question. So it's exactly the same thing, but the, the parent plants are a little bit different, right? This time, one of the parents is going to be heterozygous green. So that's a big G, 
little g, and one yellow, still little g, little g. They're crossed, and what percentage of their offspring will be green? This time, I'm going to put it in the Punnett square, just in case um, people need a little demonstration. So big G, little g, that's one parent. Little g, little g, that's the other parent. And then draw four kind of boxes, and then just put the different combinations in there. So these two are going to be green, and then these two are going to be yellow. Okay, So the percentage of green seeds of spring will be 50%. Percent. Okay, next question. So this is a very long question. If you Need more time? Just pause the video. Okay, Sheila planted 200 seeds and she got 160 plants that are flowered and produced seeds. So this is kind of tricky part, right? In reality, you don't usually get 100% germination, right? So this is exactly what happens here. So when you um, use the total number of offspring, it will be 160. Because right, the other 40 didn't germinate, they didn't grow, so you wouldn't know what they look like. Sheila was interested in two traits, the height and the color of the seeds. So this is the Sheila's results. Among that 160 plants, 89 are tall with green seeds, 11 short plants with yellow seeds, and you guys can read the rest of it. Now we're talking about two traits, right? So it has to be dye hybrid. So no B, no D. And does this follow Medallion genetics? So we're going to have to do a little calculation. Remember where we have that 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio, right? So you can convert them to proportions um, and then use the real numbers here and then see if they give you proportions that are more or less consistent with the theoretical um, pr proportions. Okay. So we talk about that the total is 16, right? So for the 9 number, the proportion should be 9 divided by 16, right? which is about 56%. If I remember correctly, you guys can double check, about 56%. So in this question, this is the number um, of offspring that have two dominant traits. right? So if you divided 89 by 160, the total, that's going to give you a number of about 55.6%. And that's very close to the 56% the, uh, in theory, right? Now, in reality, nothing is exactly the same as the theoretic number. So this is totally okay. I would say they're the same. And I would say this does follow that um, proportion for the, the offspring with the two dominant traits. And then you can just do the rest of it, right? You can calculate 11 by, divided by 160, 27 di divided by 160, and then the last one, okay? And then compare them to the theoretical ratios, which is 3 divided by 16, 3 divided by 16, and 1 divided by 16, okay? And then you're going to uh, figure out that these numbers are more or less the same. So in this example, it does follow dihybrid medallion inheritance. Now, this seems like a, a lot of calculation, right? Um, I don't think you will get to do so much calculation on T's for just one question. So if, you, if it takes you a little bit of time to kind of um, get used to this, then you know, don't worry. On real T's test, it should be less complicated than this. All right, we just finished the last topic of modeling genetics. If you think everything's helpful, please be sure to subscribe, like the video, let me know what you think, and definitely share the video. All right, I'll see you next time.